So John the Baptist came, and his ministry, we know, was only a six-month-long ministry, but he proclaimed the prophetic word that was needed to highlight what was coming, what was going to come and take his place. And then the Lord spoke to me, and he said, my son found the, and I know Chuck's taught this, he said, my son looked for and found the anointing in the current wineskin, and he participated in it. Yeah. He didn't judge it. He didn't say, oh, this is old. He didn't say, I'm going to find something else. He looked where the anointing was functioning to bring change, and he submitted to it. And when he did that, uh, heaven opened for the first time in 400 years. Heaven opened. And so we can't be so quick to look at an older ministry or an older wineskin or a, let me say it this way, a waning wineskin. There's always going to be a waning wineskin if there's going to be a waxing one. There's always going to be one going out and one coming in. We won't find the one coming in unless we're participating in the one going out. We need to do this. We need to understand this as a church. We're so quick sometimes in America to rush from one thing to the next and we've not received the fullness of the Spirit from the last one. Because Jesus was filled with the Spirit at that time and the war began. I mean the war was already going on but the war began even in a greater way because he was driven into the wilderness. Why was he driven into the wilderness? By the Spirit that he so loved and submitted to. It was because he had to go through the warfare of that wilderness just like you and I so that he could come out of that place filled with the power of God. You know, we can be filled with the Spirit of God and have no power because we've not submitted to the warfare of the wilderness that God is calling us to. And it's in every season of our life. Every season. I don't know about you, but ahead of the year it starts on me. And I, I don't understand all of it. But I just know it happens and I, I, I try to find God. When ahead of the year starts, all the walls that have I've become comfortable with in my life that I can bounce up again against and know my place, they all disappear. That's good. They all disappear. And I have no place of safety to bounce up against. I don't know my place for this next season. And it's hard. I cry. I ask God to show me what is the next process he has for me in this next season. Uh, what are some things I'm going to have to do to find my place again? What will be the boundaries of my habitation? How will I interact with my alignment? What will be my purpose in my, in my home territory and in the greater territory that I work with my alignment in? It's a difficult season, but we have to go through these things. We have, to, we have to war through this stuff so that when we come out of this wilderness period, we are filled with power. Amen. So that when we get where God is taking us to be, we know how to wield that sword appropriately, both in our life and against the enemy, and we will find our place of, in, the, in the battle. We will find our place in God's army. The new wineskin, Jesus, Jesus presented it so beautifully, but it was such warfare the whole time. John said he touched the unclean. It was unheard of. You did not do that. He delivered people from demons right in church. Can you imagine that? <laughs> right in church. I mean, every Sunday we went to church, we got demons cast out of us for 15 years. You more than me. Me more than him. 
Isn't it amazing? And they showed this in the play here that God had to send visiting mystics, strange aliens from a far country to announce that the kingdom had been birthed. It wasn't just a king. A king's not birthed unless there's a kingdom for him to come into. So strange mystics from a foreign land had to come and tell the dead church, you know, something's been birthed here. You guys got to open your eyes to it. Listen, we need to see God. Just hold your hand up. Say, let me see you like the strange mystics. Help me, Lord, not to forego anything. I love that Jesus, everywhere he went, resurrected the dead. Listen, he was resurrecting the church from the dead every time he went in there and he delivered somebody. When he healed that withered hand, that hand was dead. He went into that church service and he said, come alive. And that hand just came right out whole. That's resurrection power. You are filled with that. Lord, I loose it in a new way today. Everywhere we go, the fish will live. We are the river. The fish will live. That was one of the first open visions I had uh, when Chuck took us to, when, when I became aligned with this ministry, when Chuck took us to the seven churches of Revelation. And we were, we were in this barren place with all these rocks and we began walking back to the bus and all of a sudden I wasn't there anymore. I was walking on a riverbed in this church that had died in Revelation in Turkey in the, from the book of Revelation and I was walking in the river and the fish were jumping and I became the river and the Lord said everywhere my river goes the fish will live. That's you. Lord, I loose your river today. I stir it up in them. I say, let them see themselves as your river. I'm not going to go much further, but I do want to say this. When, you know, Mary and Joseph, you know, think of the warfare there. He didn't even want to marry her. You know, Zacharias didn't want to believe a baby could be born with his wife. Joseph didn't want the one that was conceived until God, you know, dealt with them through a dream. But think about this. When she got to that dedication service, and this is the scripture, one of the scriptures that really hit me this year for my Christmas season. Simeon prophesied, but then Anna said something. She said, a sword will pierce your heart also. To Mary, even Jesus' mother had to go through the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. The King James says, a, soul, a sword will pierce your soul. And I think that this is a season we've come through a portion of it, but we're heading into some of it where the Lord is going to show us the difference between our soul and our spirit. And he's going to cut off those things that keep us in the earth realm, that keep us in the second heaven realm, so that we can become buoyant and go up to that third heaven level and begin to worship and pray and war from that level down. The other night, uh, we have a Zoom, an East Coast Zoom on Wednesday nights. John puts it up on Facebook, and a lot of people join it from the 13 colonies. And Anne Romanello and Susie Ziegler were the ones that taught us how to do that. We thank you, ladies, for that, because we were not technical people. And it's been a powerful Zoom, because everybody participates. And we pray in tongues for 10 minutes, and then we ask them in, to take one or two minutes and share what God has given them in that two 10 minutes of praying in tongues, whether it's a vision or a word, and then we pray into it. It's amazing. And everyone has grown so much. They've matured, all of us. It's 
been powerful. And a lot of times what we get on those meetings, you guys then get on Sunday mornings. So we know because we're aligned, we're tracking with the same thing the Holy Spirit's saying here. But one of the men the other night on this Zoom had a vision of an army boot. But the army boot was upside down. And it reminded me of the uh, Robert's teaching this morning about the, the um, Roman soldier's shoe. The army boot was upside down and the sole was, was variegated. And you could see where, where it could really be used to grip well on the ground but the boot was upside down and the Lord showed me with the meaning of that vision and it was our soul cannot be in ascendancy our soul has to be submitted to our spirit man so that our footing in the battle will be proper and we will not lose our step and we began to pray that out through the eastern seaboard Lord that your body would no longer function in the soulish realm of desire and emotions. Listen, God gives us desires. He gives us emotions, but they have to be submitted to the spirit of God and to our strength and spirit man. And this is what Jesus did for us. He submitted to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that he was sanctified by the Spirit and the Word, just like we have to be sanctified, just like we have to come under that rule. He became, he was victorious because he went before us as our pattern. And when he left this earth, he gave us the very tool we needed to have victory and triumph in every area of our life. And that was the precious Holy Spirit. It is precious Holy Spirit. And so just lift your hands up. I, I keep telling you to do that, but grab onto it because he's here. He's swirling right now around all of us. And I really feel that the Lord is saying that this is a season where you are coming into a greater level of maturity that you have not even expected to experience in your lifetime. But I say to you, your eyes are opening. I am removing, I am removing the veil from your eyes today and you will see the need in your neighbor. You will see the power that I am calling forth to come out of those that have surrounded you. You will pour and you will pour and you will pour, pour, pour again, says the Lord, for my grace is sufficient for you. And I say to you, see the new wineskin. Become the effervescent wine that I am developing you to be. I loose that over you today in Jesus' mighty name. Wow, Amen. let's give a shout to this. Woo. Wow. Let's thank God for John and Cheryl right now. For the revelation, for the wisdom, for the dedication. Father, we thank you for this example that you've sent us today, for the joy, for the boldness.